Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, cartoonists Steve Benson and Brian Farrington recap the year through their provocative and occasionally twisted cartoons. That's next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Once a year, we look back at the year's big news events through the eyes of two political cartoonists who tend to see things in a slightly skewed manner. Joining me tonight are Steve Benson of the Arizona Republic and Brian Farrington, whose cartoons can be seen in the East Valley Tribune. Good to see you both again here. Once again, we are back to share Thanks, cartoons. Uh, and I ask you this every year. I'm going to ask it again. Was it a good year for cartoonists? It's always a good year. <laughs> it's always a good year when you've got like a rolling disaster in terms of the national scene. So yeah. So yeah, good good year, Brian. Busy year. You know, every year when we uh, go back and look at the cartoons, you forget yeah. what happened and all that. So much happened. So uh, a busy year, like like Steve said, uh, a lot of big issues and. Uh, so a lot of topics to come. Well, let's get to some of those topics, and we'll start with something that's topical as we speak. The CPS cases, the CPS controversy. Mm, Goodness gosh. gracious, will it ever end? What a what, talk about a rolling disaster. I mean, you got these 6,000 cases where, you know, the caseworkers are overloaded, and then Mr. Carter doesn't know what the hecky poo is going on, and Jan Brewer is saying, we're going to find where the bodies are buried and bury them deeper. I don't know what, that was a crazy line. I mean, what's, what's happened here? You got overworked, uh, you know, agents. You've got um, underperforming, uh, uh, you know, supervisors. Somebody's head is going to roll on this. This particular cartoon you did, you get any feedback on this, considering the nature of the cartoon? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got, I got some positive feedback. No, no. I once in a while I do these Jesus Christ cartoons where my editor says, "Jesus Christ, you can't run that." But in this case, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're able to do it. I mean, if 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 uh, Mr. Carter can't take uh, uh, care of things, then he'll turn it over to a professional. Brian, CPS. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Carter's going to go the way. Uh, uh, of the dinosaur on this, he's, he's going to get cut for sure. Uh, you know, it's proving out to be a disaster with the 6,000 cases getting, uh, you know, stamped like they were and not investigated. It, it's going to be, it's very serious, particularly when you deal with children. And yeah. Reacts so to who's going to take care of you then? Yeah. Uh, bad, Santa the bad Santa on the rooftop. Bad Santas are just, they're, they're cartoon fodder, aren't they? I mean, they're just, uh, they're there for you. Yes. Uh, and in this case, Bad Santa is pouring the 6,000 uh, files down the chimney and then letting them burn yes. on Christmas Eve, providing a little tinder for that. I mean, uh, what, what, a, what a nightmarish, uh, you know, holiday for these kids. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on now. We had the Yarnell Hill fire, the Yarnell Hill fire investigation. Again, when you get to tragedies, you got to be a little bit careful, or do you? Well, in this case, uh, I think it's time to you know pay tribute to, to this uh, to these heroic guys who were uh, unfortunately uh, uh, under-equipped and didn't know where they were, and now we've got these huge lawsuits. I mean, the one that just came down finally right. we got a decent lawsuit that's going to result in probably more lawsuits, and and justifiably so. I mean, it's outrageous. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a, a prime example of, of how we handle things like this, where you get you get the initial tragedy, and then it's like an onion. You peel it away, and there's always other issues, and that's what happened with, with uh, these lawsuits and uh, you know over the compensation, uh, uh, and that that's going to be pretty pretty big. And sure. Smokey Bear, there, you're, you're uh... yeah, playing uh, you know uh, paying memorial to uh, to the fallen. It, you know, it was it's it's hard to even fathom that that uh, the 19 people and the way they, they died, that would probably be the most horrible way to die. It's well, yeah, and then, uh, Steve, you got this, uh, the federal aid uh, not coming to Yarnell. Yeah, I mean, um, I think this, I can see the legalistic argument that, you know, you have to raise, uh, you, you have to meet a certain standard in terms of, uh, of uh, you know, what you're able to, uh, uh, to fund yourself and what you need help from the government on, but I think compassion here, I think if they had erred on the side of helping us uh, in these tight economic times, but a little spit on the ash mound, you mm -hmm. know. And finally, we have the, uh, the Arizona Division of Forestry out yes, in the woods. Yes, they, they were found, uh, you know, uh, liable uh, to the tunes of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and finally someone's going to pay, but uh, <laughs> the way the Forestry Division takes care of its problems is to burn their problems. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. Um, let's talk about Obamacare, a very big topic. And uh, yes. Steve, again, when you 
got a baby in a crib here with a, mm -hmm. with a, a, a snake. Well, all I'm doing here is I'm illustrating a metaphor that is commonly used by politicians as saying, my opponent is trying to kill the baby in the crib. So I'm guilty now of, uh, of drawing what that guy is doing. Said. bad uh, impressions of but, politicians. But the GOP them. wants to kill this <laughs> in the crib. They wanted to strangle this thing before it even was a, you know, a gleam in Obama's eye. I mean, it's just Ruthless. Uh, we're, we've, re we've returned to bad Santa. Well, uh, you know, what better way to uh, wake up for Christmas than get cancellation uh, letters from the insurance company? I mean, this and the crash of the website were the two, uh, will be the two uh, uh, things Making that, it sound like that they, uh, uh, Obamacare will be remembered for. Uh, yeah, but they didn't have their, their insurance, uh, you know, uh, program. Well, I think canceled. the insurance companies are taking advantage of the law and, 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 and sending out these like letters that, covered, that, that are claiming that uh, they can cancel it because they have to follow the regulations and what, what, what they have to be at. Um, you know, again, with the, with the website crashing and this, and th there really was a lot of call on both sides to, to postpone it and, and try, to, try to fix it. And, uh, um, Time out. You, oh. They want to postpone it so they can kill the baby in the crib, uh, strangle <laughs> it Is that going to be the more? recurring motif tonight? Are we going to go back to that? <laughs> but you've even got yeah, this. Yeah, and you've got, well, that you've got the Band-Aid yeah, on the ship. I know, I, but, but in this case, I mean, this was an utter unmitigated disaster. They're trying to push this thing politically to have the October 1, you know, uh, you know roll out, and it, it hadn't been technologically vetted. Uh, and so you've got all these various subcontractors who don't know what the other hand is doing, and it was, it was pushed too fast. Too Deep. far, but I think they'll work it out. I know that's your worst nightmare: thirty million people covered by insurance who can't afford it. Well, no, it was originally a Republican idea. You have to give them that. Yeah, so, the Heritage you know, Foundation. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. absolutely. All right, and there's there's the laptop crashing into the White House again. Uh, you know, that's kind of yeah. a little bit of nine. I, I thought of nine eleven when I saw this. I'm thinking, uh, what's he thinking over there? Uh, yeah, you know, it. Uh, w the website and tech issues are always a, a thing that. Uh, are, have bugs and, and hard to work out, and it's going to be an ongoing thing. I mean, they said again this week that they made some changes, so we'll see what happens. All right, and this week, of course, we're going to we should mention that this is being taped for broadcast throughout the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for blowing that idea. Oh yeah. Out of the water. <laughs> um, you again, you've got <laughs> Democrats fleeing yes. the president here. So well, uh, you had the Obama meet with sixteen Democrats saying, "Help us out here." I mean, we've got to go back to our constituents. Well, maybe they all, all wish they were in Kentucky right now, but uh, you know because they're they're actually doing the rollout pretty good. But yeah, this is a liability, and there have been Democrats grumbling and saying, you know, no, uh, uh, this is too politically of a hot potato. Well, I think uh, you know Obama's poll numbers reflect that overwhelmingly people are unhappy with uh, a lot of what he's doing, and, and they're unhappy with uh, with what's happening with Obamacare. Yeah, but this happened. and one of the reasons that uh, his poll numbers reflect that is because in uh, the website. Indicates that that uh, that they should push it back, that they should uh, no. uh, rework a little bit. You know, they can um, rework it, but actually, as it gets up and rolling and it's humming along now, and, and with uh, it takes about one second for a uh, you know a call to be answered. As, as it is more successfully implemented, I know this is your worst nightmare. <laughs> no. More people no. will be satisfied with it. This, uh, look, they had the same problem with uh, Romney Care in Massachusetts. Real quickly, uh, Bane waste on your cartoon. Little, explain please, because that's a little subtle there now for some of our. Uh uh, well, you know that was uh, 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 Bain was uh, Romney's uh, 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 company. Yes. And uh, you know, and he's been one of the loudest uh, uh, callers for to okay. throw it out right. and restart it. Didn't want that to slide okay. by there without right. anyone seeing the, the Bain. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have the governor here. Uh, interesting. Yeah, she's this strong conservative, you know, who says I'm not going to take you know uh, government handouts and this is uh, this is bad for the economy. And Obama's a socialist and he was born in in Kenya or whatever. Uh, but hey. Expanding Medicare for uh, uh, or, or Medicaid rather, she'll take it. I mean, so you got to hand it to her, you know, that she's. Is yeah, she you have to give you have to give uh, uh, Jannie Poo some props here that uh, she made the right decision because, you know, there, it, it was financially uh, beneficial to the state of Arizona with a lot of the Fed Fed money. Jannie Poo. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's everybody's yeah, favorite you got the hots governor. For, you got the hots for the governor. Okay. I love seventy year old women. <laughs> yeah. On we move again. Yes, uh, let's go to, uh, you kind of mentioned the poll numbers there with the Bain Waste thing. Steve, you've got the poll numbers here in a different kind of venue. Yeah, uh, while wow, low uh, blood pressure, no, it's, it's your poll numbers. I mean, uh, he's down what? He's down where your hero Bush was, uh, you know, in, in the low 30s. H.W. Bush, not H 43. He's yeah, a disaster. But uh, so, you know, um, 
most people now think Obama, the thing that is really uh, a challenge for Obama is most people now think he's deliberately deceptive. They don't trust him. You know, you can, uh, you can keep your insurance and find out that a lot of people can't. So they just don't trust him anymore, and that's a well, bad place to Well, when he went around be. campaigning uh, for, for, to uh, promote Obamacare, and that was one of the selling points, that you can keep your insurance, and when mm -hmm. they find out that you can or, or the insurance company is sending out these letters, you're right, it, it does uh, speak to his uh, trustworthiness, and I think that's why his poll numbers reflect that. Happy Father's Day. Explain, please. Here. Well, yeah, I think a lot of people uh, feel that, uh, you know, a lot of things Obama has done haven't been good for the overall country, and, uh, um, you know, um, so I think, again, going back to his poll numbers, I Why do you have a, a, a black man in a cartoon? I knew you were going to say that. With say a that. hangman's news. Haven't you learned any kind of sensitivity over the last generation? Yeah, but it has nothing to do You're with that. You're a conservative. Thank, thank you very I'm much. sorry. Nice All right, let's uh, move now on. Well, you got, uh, you got the president with, uh, with, with at least the foot uh, working up on the <laughs> ankle, uh, maybe the uh, yeah, Achilles tendon in his mouth. That uh, racist caricature there. Oh, please. I, I've got his mouth almost going to stick his foot in. Okay. Right. But, uh, yeah, well... Uh, yeah, Obama does, I don't exactly remember, to be honest with you, what exactly he said in this particular situation that put his foot in his mouth, but I'm sure that, uh, you know, he's... And this has to do with your old age and uh, that, inability yeah, to reflect maybe, back well, on what well, you're you know, It kind of I, says something, though, that I, you can't I, even remember I, if there I, were I, so I, many instances sure. I, All I remember is I should sign up for expanded Medicaid. That's what I did. Yeah, I should do. But, uh, uh, yeah, there was something going on, and Obama reacted to it. Let's move on, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, are you <laughs> sure it's not Medicare you should be looking into? Or is it no? Um, uh, if you can't beat them, enjoy them. Yeah, uh, this is scary. This is scary. You have, uh, what, uh, some 30, maybe even 40 Republican-controlled legislative chambers uh, across the nation that have tried in some way, form, or fashion to impede the, the ultimate elemental power that the people have to control their government, and that is the right to vote. When the right to vote uh, is, is, is seriously undermined, then you've lost the country. And it seems to me like the Republicans, in the name of, of you know, preventing fraud, which is a, a, is, is a boogeyman, uh, they're actually trying to restrict minorities, older people, uh, you know, from, from uh, the young people from voting. We don't have a cartoon from you on this, but would you like to respond to what we just heard? Uh, no, I don't. Let's move on. Okay. Oh, <laughs> um, you need to be on some kind of medication too. We got a uh, <laughs> we got a, a, a puzzle here, and this is kind of runs in a, in a string of cartoons we're going to show here, uh, with the Republican Party uh, kind of. Eating, it, eating its own tail here. I mean, there, there's some really, there's a civil war going on yeah. in many respects within yeah. the party. There is, and uh, the demographics of this country are changing, and the Tea Party, yeah. which came in as this boisterous, you know, refreshing change, they are not fitting in with the system of government that's called bipartisanship. I mean, right. Boehner's got hell breaking loose sure. with his, with his uh, you know, his uh, coalition there. And well, I, th I think the you know, like I think the Republican Party has to get that in line. They have to get the extremists, and they have to get it in line. I mean, the the uh, gridlock that's that, that's been causing. Well, the and, Tea Party's and attitude toward government is the best government is no government. We're the wrecking crew. Right. The more we can destroy and dysfunctionalize government, the better America will be. And that's not what people want because eventually politics is local. And if you start impeding my ability to get services from the government. You got uh, Karl Rove, and you've got some uh, Tea Partiers here, and they're both saying it's our party. Whose party is it? Well, Karl Rove uh, has demonstrated uh, to the mainstream Republican satisfaction that the Tea Party is actually the skunk, you know, in in the garden. And so, yeah, they're both fighting over the party. But it's interesting to see, like you say, this this civil war going on. Uh, Brian, well, I think that the Tea Party will lose traction over time. I don't think that they're in for it the long term. I think. Uh, okay. Um, real quickly now, we've got uh, the government shutdown, which by all accounts has hurt Republicans more yeah, than Democrats. Absolutely. And you've got uh, both uh, vehicles right there in the, in the, on the highway. Well, I, I think that, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of what the shutdown had to do had to do over funding Obamacare uh, directly or indirectly. And I think that, uh, and I, I think strategically, anytime we have a shutdown, we, ha we had this happen in 95 with uh, Newt Gingrich. It hurt the Republican Party when he tried to do it. Ultimately, you know, it's going to hurt the Republicans if they try to do it instead of try to compromise. And or that's something why else. we had a miracle happen in the last couple of days where they came together on a moderate 
a budget resolution that will actually uh, stabilize the economy for a couple of years. I mean, Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan's one. Of Paul, Paul Ryan. Yeah. So yeah. he would not have been a good vice president, but he's good crunching the numbers. Uh, Steve Bonsai, this again, going back to the theme that the Republican Party is, in many respects, hurting itself. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's bent on, on self-destruction, and, and, and <laughs> it doesn't need a battleship to plow into. Just give me an open sea. Well, the Republican Party's evolved so much. I mean, look at the Republican Party of uh, even Goldwater days. He was looked at as such a conservative, and today he wouldn't even, Reagan or, or Goldwater wouldn't even be allowed in the Republican Party. Reagan or Goldwater, you got that right. Yeah. Good evolution or bad evolution? I think it's been a bad evolution because they can't get anything done. I well, and, and, they, and you know, they, there's a lot of conversation now. How about the Dixiecrats, the Southern conservative Democrats mm -hmm. of bygone generations have now become Republicans, and you kind of touch on this a little bit with the mm -hmm. guy there in the stars and bars in his living room. Yeah, well, uh, this was drawn within the context of Obama, supposedly being the Marxist wimpo that he is, actually taking it to, uh, you know, to the terrorists over there and, 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 and bombing and, and, and uh, droning and all that kind of thing. And uh, why would a guy that was born in Kenya, why would a guy born in Kenya bomb his own country? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I almost had a New England uh, tinge to it. Where, yeah. where are you from, anyway? Where, is that, where was that character from, I should ask? I'm, I'm, I'm a Texan that likes uh, what? All right, here we go. Let's talk about guns <laughs> now. Guns, uh, again, as with last year, guns, a very big uh, issue. Steve, the mandatory uh, gun buyback. Uh, I just think that it's just so insane. You're not allowing police agencies to buy back guns and destroy them. You have to put them back on the market. Uh, and, and complicating this is, b thanks to the NRA, uh, there's no product liability uh, threats that are hanging over gun manufacturers. So they're just going to be recycled back, what, in the name of the Second Amendment? I mean, this is, this is just insane. Absolutely insane. Brian? Well, one of the things that, uh, I mean, uh, we, we definitely, I mean, guns have been such a, a major uh, story this year. Uh, and on the anniversary of Sandy Hook, I mean, the, the guy that, uh, that, that perpetrated that, I mean, they come out with a report that said that he was very heavily into violent video games. And I think, you know, that, that's one of the yeah, things that has to be looked at. In Japan, and I've lived there, they're very heavy into violent video games, and they kill eight people a year with Yeah, they, uh, they, they attack Pearl Harbor, so there you go. Yeah, you're <laughs> living in the past like most conservatives. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Where did that come? Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Let's get uh, back to another gun issue here. Uh, talk to me about this one. I mean, this way. Did you get well, much of a response? Because I could see where you could get a response on something. Well, like you this. want to get responses on this, and uh, the response that came from the NRA was so disappointing. They were silent for a week after Sandy Hook. Everyone was, uh, you know, anticipating they'd come up with something meaningful. And what does? What does uh, lame, lame LaPierre uh, uh, propose? Oh, he proposes well, more guns. We need to put a footlocker behind every teacher's desk and bama, bama, bama. You know, it, it, we, we're just going to arm ourselves to the teeth. And that's all we need is we just need to arm the teachers. Well, clearly the, uh, the uh, NRA needs a new public relations department because they don't know how to respond to these things. I mean, uh, back when... Uh, 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 Charlton Heston was uh, uh, president of the NRA. He would go to these rallies right after a shooting, you know, and it, it just seems like it's the wrong, wrong message to send. And I think a lot of moderate, sensible I, gun owners think it's crazy. I met Charlton Heston. I invited him to speak at a cartoonist convention, and over dinner he leaned toward me. And, and he, he grabbed your neck and said, get your damn dirty hands <laughs> off me, you ape, right? <laughs> and he said, gun registration is coming. That's what he told me over dinner. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. So. Um, real quickly before it's we get off. It's a communist out. conspiracy. <laughs> Charlton Heston was in on it. I'm sorry, did I lose control of the show? <laughs> I don't know. For briefly. Uh, Governor Brewer? Another I mean, shot at Governor Brewer there, here. Uh, so to speak. Yes. I mean, there, there is not a gun she doesn't like. I mean, after, uh, after Gabby Giffords was shot, uh, the legislature, you know, uh, you know, devotes the state to the gun. And, and we have our own official gun now, whatever it is. The, and uh, the, what was the 45 or something? Uh, but yeah, yeah she's just uh, she's just like uh, uh, she's doing what uh, you know uh, her 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 puppet masters tell her to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we leave guns, uh, this one. I mean, do you use children's bodies in a cartoon? How how far do you well, go? Well, you know, on like since this? children are killed, uh, yeah, I think we should use it. This cartoon was actually drawn a year ago, and my editor says you can't run it because you've done too many on this. I said, okay, I'm going to wait for a year, and I'm going to hold you to this, and so. I showed him half the half-drawn cartoon last week, and he goes, do we really have to? And I said, you promised. 
you promised. I think that it's powerful because it shows in human terms the cause of this unregulated militia that we have out there. Speaking of uh, uh, rights and regulations mm -hmm. and so forth, um, NSA spying, it's interesting how that it kind of comes and goes in terms of people's attention and their curiosity, mm -hmm. then it goes away, then we find out there's all sorts of surveillance and mm -hmm. then you draw a cartoon. Well, you know, the, the NSA collects, get this, a billion, B as in boy, a billion data points a day, a day, okay? And it's a fundamental violation of the Fourth Amendment. If you're going to start the ACLU is arguing it's one thing to like barge into your computer or your house, but it's also unconstitutional just to collect my stuff. You just can't start collecting my stuff even if you're not going to like process. Well, uh, to speak to that, I mean, I mean, you yeah, need especially, a warrant, especially in America when we're we're obsessed with tweeting and and uh, and Facebook and all this other stuff. All this information that it's worthless. I mean, they're getting all this information. You know, uh, how can they possibly go if through? If I had it? your what? face, I would be obsessed. With <laughs> and what are they going to do with it? You know. All right. Um, said the tweet. Said the tweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Let's get to some some uh, general topics here. Jody Arias trial. And <laughs> I want to I want to say <laughs> that this is the first time on Arizona Horizon we have used the words Jody followed by Arias. I'm, I'm proud to be responsible for that. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, it was one of those big public trials that uh, happened to be here in Phoenix. It uh, that your wife commentated on. Yes, uh, she was a commentator for CNN. I have to publicly disclose that. And Dr. Drew. Hi, honey. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she, uh, anyway, uh, she, meaning Jody Arias, uh, you know, captivated uh, a certain uh, demographic uh, of uh, middle-aged, overweight housewives that like to eat bonbons and watch that. I was going to say, who, who was actually captivated by this? <laughs> uh, Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace. Did what? you see her fat head on TV every night? I mean, oh, um, uh, well, it was, you know, it was this uh, sensational. Well, it had all the makings of a, of a great, uh, uh, you know, it was lifetime. I and mean, it was a lifetime movie and got great ratings. But uh, grizzly and it put, you know, it, it's one more notch in Phoenix Bell of becoming a major metropolitan place where we have this kind of stuff happening. We have great parks, great murder trials. Well, I mean, at, at least we're not floor. And in Florida, That's we had right. the Trayvon Martin case, yes. and boy, this this really got some big attention for yes, quite it, a while. Yes, it did, and uh, I do believe that uh, Mr. Uh, Zimmerman came uh, to the the gunfight in a bad mood. We find out now he's a perpetual domestic abuser. He had a fight that night with his wife, and his pension is to go for the gun. I'm and, not, I'm and not saying I Steve converted me, but I have to I have to see in in, in hindsight that. I, I, I've changed my attitude about it. I think this guy's an unstable guy. We've seen reports uh, he likes to wield the gun. Uh, so, you know, I mean... Uh, and I think, you, I think uh, Trayvon was racially profiled from the get-go. Well, I mean, you know... Uh, he, there's all kinds of stories out there, like Trayvon was rattling doorknobs and had a hoodie and was, like, peeking in the windows. This is all I think comes there's, there's from a dark uh, underbelly of don't trust African Americans. Uh, you have your stand your ground, though. Well, I, I think that uh, there's a lot of people that feel that this is a, a law that uh, uh, is, is necessary, that, that, that there's a lot of innocent people out there that, that uh, fall under that. Uh, I think initially people thought that George Zimmerman fell under that. Now, in hindsight of some of his actions, they may not feel that way. The trouble with the stand but your ground law is that there's only one te person to testify uh, in defense of standing the ground, and that's the person that killed the other person. Uh, and it, what's happened is homicides and, and, and so-called self-defense uh, events have, have mushroomed in Florida since this law was passed. Boston Marathon bombing. Uh, difficult to do this one? Well, it was the first uh, the first blush, so to speak, and uh, that was uh, I did this cartoon the day of, and uh, some people were disturbed by it because uh, they wanted a tribute right away, but I wanted to deal with the shock. Uh, you know, the, uh, the travesty, the gut-wrenching pain that Boston and America was feeling, so I had, you know, the Grim Reaper breaking the tape. All right, I think we have time for one more, and that will be of Joe Arpaio, and uh, of course he is in the news every year, as he was this year. Yeah, well, of course. The he's gift been, that keeps on giving, He's old been Joe. hit by the, the judge for, uh, you know, um, uh, illegal use of, uh, of, 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 of uh, his men and, and women uh, deputies to uh, to racially profile, you know, follow you around and then tell you to commit some minor crime. I mean, how, how long can this boom. guy go on? Seriously, I mean, he's been what 20 years now, uh, sheriff. Uh, it's amazing that 
that he still gets he still gets elected. Uh, I don't know. Before we go, and I've I've asked a couple of times, what kind of a response did you get? Were you worried about the response? Do, do does the response? Are you trying to convince people? Are you trying to motivate people? Provoke? But what are you trying to do? Well, I think initially you, uh, uh, you're basically you react as, as anybody that has an opinion about anything, and that you sort of uh, you, you react by by expressing that opinion in a visual way, visual metaphors. Uh, but as we as we work into it, you know, we try to be creative, and there are times when you know we, we try to push and you know um, exaggerate like silly putty. I mean, we are not literal journalists. We don't have the who, why, what, and where. We you know we can exaggerate and take advantage of that. So Very quickly, we do well, push buttons along the way when we do that. What I like to do is I like to grab people. Draw on your underwear. That's Thank one you of very much. Yeah. That's a little you got 15 <laughs> seconds. I like to grab people's attention. I like to hit them in the gut, knock the uh, wind out of their sails, and they go, whoa. And then once I got their attention, I want them to think. It's not that I'm trying to convert them or uh, you know, convince them. I want a reaction. And that's what we get with our cartoons. Well, and we're going to get a reaction from this show. We always do. It's good to have Thanks, you Ted. both here. Thanks I wish joining. I could say the same. <laughs> That is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.